everybody, and welcome to It Matters Radio Indie Music Show. If this is the first time that you're visiting us, my name is Monica Brinkman, and I'm going to be your host for today. We're all about music, and we bring you music seven days a week, because without music, life just would not be worth living. And this is my kitty cat, Punky, and as soon as the show begins, she always seems to pop up because she adores music. Plus, she thinks she's a star of the show. We'll let her think that. Anyway, tonight, we're going to focus just on one artist because um, I was introduced to this artist only recently, and I mean, it just blew me away. She is different. She's not someone you're going to find every single day uh, on the music charts. Her style of music is unique. It's her own. And that is something that's hard to find nowadays. Uh, this evening, we're going to focus on some songs. And these come from Wyatt at the Coyote Palace. Now, uh, th this was just released, oh gosh, uh, late, late 2016. And... Um, it's a book double CD combination. Quite interesting also. And it came out in October in the UK. And then later on, I think it was around November 11th or something in the US. So this is brand new. It, it, it's something that uh, not many people have gotten to heard. So I hope you're going to enjoy it with me this evening. Uh, it's a haunting masterpiece. And it was recorded at her favorite studio in Portsmouth, Rhode Island with Steve Rizzo at the helm and I think people have heard of Steve Rizzo before in fact uh, we've had Steve's music on here before and we'll probably have it on again and the stories and songs of love and loss combine Kristen's humor with the pains and travels of a life spent constantly in motion and I bet most musicians lives are constantly in motion so we're going to start this off with a song from, and remember this, Wyatt at the Coyote Palace, and this is called Some Gone Slapstick. Hey, I love slapstick. <laughs> Let's see what this has to offer us. Enjoy. <laughs> Fall on the rebound. 
yeah. I think some definitely have gone slapstick in that. And um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about Kristen in case you think, uh, gosh, what has she done, you know, before this and such. Well, uh, amazingly, uh, she found an influential art punk band that was called Throwing Muses. And this was in Providence, Rhode Island at the age of 14, 14 years old. And she has spent quality time confounding expectation and breaking all the rules, both her rules and others' rules. Yeah, and I like that because they tell you you're supposed to do something in a certain way musically and such, and uh, -uh she's going to do what she feels in her heart. So from life as the reluctant front person for the muses to the solo career, career that she swore would never happen, through the founding of an ambitious and altruistic nonprofit to her recent foray into a surprisingly successful new career as an author. Kristen, a mother of four, didn't see much of this coming at all. She had no idea. And Throwing Moses first gained traction in the early 80s, playing on show rosters with mm, artists like uh, Pixies, Mission of Burma, Dinosaur Jr., they signed with a highly regarded British indie label, 480 Records, the label's first American signing, by the way, and eventually moved on to Sire Warner Brothers. After six releases, the band put out their crowning achievement, and that was called Limbo. Do you remember that in 1996? And they disbanded for seven years. In 2003, the band reformed, recorded, and released the CD uses. Then again, in 2013, Throwing Muses returned again with their first studio album in 10 years. And this was called Purgatory Paradise. It was published as a book and a CD. And I love this because it, it, any of you who know me, I'm an author. I love books. I love reading and what better way to listen to a CD and have a book that you can follow with it? it, it it's wonderful. You got the best of both worlds. Now, the art book is 64 pages of lyrics, essays, and photos and includes a 32-track CD that was entirely listener-supported. Okay, we're going to play a little bit more music and we'll chat now and then a little bit more about our wonderful artist, Kristen Hirsch. This next song I'm going to present it is called, <laughs> excuse me, whew. I'm going to put up a photo there because I like to have photos along with things too. And I think you saw this photo in the last video. And this is called Guadalupe. I love Guadalupe. <laughs>
have to pose this question. When you listen to this music and these songs, which is telling the story more, the music or the lyrics? I have to say, Kristen has stepped out of a box and she has brought us something remarkable. Listen to the music in all her songs. They're telling a story. I don't, uh, she takes her instrument and she makes it talk. Very, very difficult to do. And it blends so very well with her vocals. And then to have a storybook along with it. Outstanding. Outstanding is all I can say. Um, I'm going to play one more song right now because I can't get enough of this. And it's just absolutely wonderful. So, uh, folks, this one that we're presenting to you right now, it is called Wonderland. And I can't wait to see what this one sounds like. I haven't heard this one. But, ah, uh, Wonderland has to be magnificent. Here we go. Kristen Harris from Wyatt at the Coyote Palace. <laughs> Okay, what happened? Uh, we know that Kristen Hurst was with Throwing Muses for many, many years and did quite well. But uh, her solo and mostly acoustic career spun off in 1994 with the release of what was called Hips and Makers. The album was widely acclaimed and included Your Ghost, a duet with R.E.M.'s Michael Stipe. 
Since then, Kristen has released a steady stream of solid and distinctly individual solo albums, including Strange Angels, Sky Motel, and Learn to Sing, Sing Like a Star, and 2010's Crooked. And that released as her first book CD. So if you want, you love book CDs, you got to check that one out. It's entirely listener-funded recording written in demude, in public, and in full conversation with the audience. And it's meant for them to consume it. Just love it. Okay, I'm ready for some more. And right now, we're going to have you listen to another song and this one is called Elysian Fields. Anybody know where Elysian Fields is? Or is that just a beautiful, beautiful name for this song? <laughs>
Isn't that song fantastic? Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, you start listening to it, it goes a certain way, then out of left field, as they say, comes this other music that you didn't expect, and it catches you by surprise. And just when you think that you're into that, here comes something else different. That's what I'm trying to say. This Each one of the songs takes you on a personal journey. And it's outstanding. Um, I mean, I'm usually bebopping along. I say bebopping, but rocking along, you know, and, and moving and such. But I'm kind of like just mesmerized. And I think that is one of the things that has made this wonderful artist so popular and I mean she is very popular you wouldn't believe it uh, just check out some of her videos on YouTube and such and and you'll see how many people are in love with her music because she's true to herself and she creates something special to each person because I don't think two people are going to listen to a song and get the same thing from it. They're each going to have their own little personal journey through it. Well, I, I, I had to bring something up. Um, in 2007, Kristen co-founded the nonprofit Coalition of Artists and Stakeholders, Cash Music. Now, over the past few years, Cash has not only completely funded Kristen's own output, but has also powered dozens of other artists and label projects and has grown into a widely recognized powerhouse of technical tools that enable commerce, communication, and sustainability for artists, all in the open source. And guess what? It's free of charge. Isn't that wonderful? Not only is <laughs> she have outstanding music, but she's giving back to other artists by creating something so wonderful as this. So I would check it out if I was you. Okay, I need a little bit more. <laughs> I, I, you know, I just can't get quite enough of this. And I love the pictures that we're showing also. They're a little bit different. And here's a song I'm going to introduce to you, and it is called Bright. Ah, I love Bright.
well. You know, I don't know if you've noticed this or not about the songs. Most singers want to be out there in front. They really do, um, of course. And they want to sing and they want to be heard. And the music is kind of accompany them, I should say, or in the background a little bit, even though sometimes there'll be solos for them. Kristen has blended it all together where each instrument and her vocals is also an instrument is at an even keel. She's not there blasting away over the instruments. She's blending into the instruments and there's an even flow. Yeah. Yeah. And that is not a easy thing to do. And Chris and I just have to, you know, take my hat off to you if I was wearing one. <laughs> okay, we're going to talk about one more thing because I have one more song after I, I, I say this to present to you. And this is about her book writing career. And it began several years ago, beginning with essays and tour diaries, which she published on her own website. So you might have seen those if you've been following her. And she was also a guest blogger on Pals.com. Since then, she has published Paradoxical Undressing in the UK. And it was released as the critically acclaimed Rat Girl in the USA. So it had a different name in the USA. It was called Rat Girl. And a children's book that was called Toby Snacks, S-N-A-X. And Don't Suck, Don't Die. <laughs> and that was a personal account of her long friendship with the late Vic Chestnut. So quite talented she is and I bet very humble because uh, I don't see her toting herself all over the place. I see her helping other people. So for the last song that we're going to be presenting, this one is one that is called American copper and that's c-o-p-p-e-r hmm we'll see if that really means copper or what okay here we go Break with the 
like she just outdoes herself each time and there's many more songs uh on on Wyatt at the Coyote Palace if I played them all we'd probably be here for you know at least an hour or hour and a half or so and anyway I want to leave some for a surprise for you I if you loved Kirsten Hirsch please stop by Facebook and say hello to her and also, you can find out more info at www.kristenhirsch.com. And that's K-R-I-S-T-I-N-H-E-R-S-H.com. And also at www.kristenhirsch.com slash books slash Wyatt at the Coyote Palace. And I think what a great gift that would be for someone well even yourself huh <laughs> to get this wonderful combination of a book and music and folks uh i'm so glad you stopped by today and took a listen and if you like the show please share us with others i have said this excuse me every time i've been here but um we're not here for money we're not here for anything but to support artists and to bring you the best of music that we can find from all around the world and we'll continue to do so as long as you continue to stop by and listen so with that folks i think i'm going to say a goodbye and as always my wonderful wonderful friends i want you to rock on yeah.